Hello! It's me, with the bright light behind me! Uh, my name is John Bills, and I'm gonna teach you all about the Slavs. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm about to print a book, which you may have heard of, um, but probably haven't, um, called An Illustrated History of Slavic Misery. This isn't the real copy, this is a proof copy. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to be promoting the book all over the Balkans and Central Europe and Eastern Europe, and maybe the UK about stuff. Um, so why not make some little educational videos? Today I'm going to get my hair cut. I'm going to get a cut in Zhizhkov in Prague. I won't film that because nobody wants to see that. Although I've got to say, my barber's pretty good. Um, and then we'll learn all about a one-eyed mad man called Jan Zhizhka. Hmm. He's this guy. So, Jan Zhizhka is the guy that this part of the city is named after, which is Zhizhkov. And he is basically the greatest Czech military leader of all the times um, if you can allow basically to be used for such a large phrase um, he was a 15th century Hussite badass who somehow managed to go through his entire career undefeated in battle much like Arsenal in 2003-4 I think it was 2003-4 um, and what is remarkable is that he did this with a very small army with very primitive weapons and with one eye. Yep, he was uh, a one-eyed man fighting a two-eyed battle and somehow coming out on top. So he kind of invented the tank, although in those days it was like a load of wood cobbled together with a load of peasants in and just rolled down hills. Um, but hey, win your battles. I have no intention of criticizing Jan Zizka, but his foot form looks a little questionable there. And his horse looks miffed. And it was up on this hill. Ah, ah. That his greatest victory was secured. Uh, June 12, 1420. Zizka, 100 of his finest peasants managed to batter around 4,000 imperial soldiers using nothing but um, wheat, determination, violence, probably no small amount of imperial uh, uselessness, but he, he managed to do it with one eye. I mean, explain that to me, one eye. But hey, he actually ended up losing both his eyes. So this is his statue now. It's uh, the third largest equestrian statue in the world. It's pretty, pretty large. Um, yeah. Jan Zizka, the greatest Czech military leader of all time. Look at the proud flag there. You can maybe make a Prague one over there. The flag looks great. Zizka. I don't know what he's making the TV tower, but he's been dead for, you know, a solid 500 plus years, so I don't think he'd be too bothered by now. Uh, he eventually died of plague because, you know, no human can kill a marauding soldier with no eyes, so uh, plague will have to do. So he had kind of like 15 active years in battle, and as I said, he never never lost. Um, which is remarkable, really, considering that his 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 army, so to speak, was was basically just the peasants of the area who um, were fighting for beliefs, but um, they're mostly kind of fighting to not be treated so terribly, I guess. Um, as mentioned, he did this by instilling them all with a bit of like genuine belief, and they would sing songs that would create this wall of noise, which would you know, scare off horses and make Imperial soldiers feel a bit um, 
Intimidated, I guess, because noise has that effect. The peasants had so much wood and timber available that it, they made use of it by forming wagons um, and then loading the wagons up with peasants who could shoot from the wagons without fear of being shot at. Um, and then they would sort of be rolled down hills and just batter through people, which is amazing, really. <laughs> Obviously, like, a lot of peasants probably died as part of these collisions and, you know, but, again, when, you know, you only have... There's the David and Goliath analogy that I'm sure works, something about a stone and that. He eventually did lose his other eye, um, but despite losing both eyes, he never lost the battle. Um, died of plague, because, you know, plague gets us all eventually. Um, and is remembered as the the most important, the most successful, <laughs> um, the most lacking in eyes Czech military leader of all time. But the question does remain, did he like football? Of course, Jan Zizka didn't like football. It was the 15th century. I don't think he'd care if, if Bohemians managed to squash Karvina. Next week is my final weekend in Prague before heading off to promote an illustrated history of Slavic misery, an illustrated history of Slavic misery, an illustrated history of Slavic misery. So... I don't know whether I'll bother looking at somebody like Jan Hus or Milado Horakova or Martina Navratilova, my favourite name. Uh, but we'll see. And then it's to, to Slovenia. So feel free to give me an email at miseryslavic at gmail.com if you'd like to complain about anything or pre-order the book. But there'll be a website set up soon.